Hi XR developers! In this video I will show you how to create your first Vision OS app with the long-awaited Unity Poly Spatial Package. This will be a longer than usual video and I leave all the links in the description. I made sure to set the timestamps for all the relevant parts, so feel free to skip to the part that is most relevant to you. We will together install all the required software such as Unity, Xcode as well as the Vision OS simulator and then we will create different apps together. Keep in mind, you can already create apps for Vision OS without any polyspatial license, although you are limited to creating windowed apps, which we will talk about later. If you require a polyspatial license, you can easily get this by getting a free trial of Unity Pro, which lasts 30 days and is for free. Just make sure that you unsubscribe before those 30 days are over. Of course, I will also leave the link in the description. We will also look at how to create fully immersive apps, leveraging our existing apps, which already use AR Foundation and XR Interaction Toolkit. We will start by looking at some samples and then I will show you how to use the play to device feature from Unity to directly test apps from your Unity editor on either the simulator or later on the Vision Pro device itself. If you watch this video, please make sure that you check the documentation and install all the required versions at the current time of you watching this video, because all of these tools are still in beta and it can change daily. Also, for the deployment of Vision OS apps, you are currently required to have a silicon-based Mac. It is intended to later also support Intel-based Macs. If you like this type of content, please take a second to like and subscribe or check out my Patreon where you can find all the source code for each tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord community where we are happy to help you. Now, let's finally get started with Vision OS development. Let's now start to set up the required software to develop for Vision OS. Unity Polyspatial and its support for Vision OS require Unity 2022.3.11 or later. You can also get started by simply upgrading your existing project to this version. Also, make sure the Vision OS Build Support and iOS Build Support modules are both installed in your Unity editor. Before we create our Unity project, let's also install all the other development tools. Compiling for Vision OS requires Xcode 15.1 Beta 1 at the time of recording and you must currently use an Apple Silicon Mac. Let's install Xcode now. We go to the Apple Downloads page and search for it there. Just follow the install guide and make sure to add Xcode to your applications. Once installed, let's also get the Vision OS simulator. You can either search for it in the Download Center too, or there are also some easier ways. If you install Xcode for the first time, it will ask you to install Vision OS as well, you can simply select it here and it will be installed. Alternatively, we can go up and click on Window and select Devices and Simulators. Here we can add new simulators. Or if we don't have an SDK installed, we can do it right in here. One benefit of doing it this way is that you will immediately see which simulator is compatible with your Xcode version. As you can see, I have another Vision OS simulator installation which is not compatible, so let's remove that just to be sure. After installation, we can look for the simulator in our applications. Let's open the simulator and try it out. We can see the Apple menu, and we have several compatible apps, such as Safari, that work great inside the simulator. We can move the window around and resize it, which also works great. All right, guys, we now installed all the necessary software, and we know all the requirements. We are ready to create our first Vision OS project. Let's open up the Unity Hub and make sure we have a Unity version 2022 LTS or later. And we have installed the experimental Vision OS module. Next, create a new Unity project using URP to take advantage of all polyspatial features. Once we have our new project set up, we can finally talk about the different modes and apps we can create in Unity for the Vision OS platform. Let's start with the default configuration. For this, we don't need a polyspatial license yet. By default, when we build an app with the Vision OS platform as the target, we will create a so-called windowed app. As the name suggests, this will simply display our 2D and 3D content inside a window in the Vision OS simulator, just like Apple Maps or Safari, and it can be opened alongside other apps, but more about that later. So. To get started, open the build settings and let's switch the platform to Vision OS. 
we want to build for the latest version of Xcode and check the development build checkbox. Lastly, but very importantly, depending on where you want to run your build, you have to select the target accordingly inside the player settings under target SDK. In our case, we need to select simulator SDK. Now, to prepare our scene, I just added a custom skybox, then added a canvas, imported TextMesh Pro, and added a button to it. This is already all we have to do to be able to interact with the UI. Lastly, I added a 3D cube to the scene as well. After that, we can build our first Xcode project for Vision OS. After it is finished, open up the Xcode project and make sure to add your signature in the Signing and Capabilities tab. Then, simply press on Run and the simulator will open and load your app. As you can see, we get the Unity splash screen and we can move and scale the window, as well as open other windows alongside it. Awesome guys! Let's now go one step further and look at another type of app we can create, namely a fully immersive VR app, which technically could be an existing project of yours using the XR Interaction Toolkit. For this, we need a polyspatial license. We then open the package manager and install the Vision OS package. For this, we enter its package name and then click on Add. Once it has been installed, we also want to install the URP samples that come with it. We can then go to the project settings and see that the XR plugin management and the Vision OS plugin have been installed. Let's activate the Vision OS plugin. If you are using hand tracking in your application, you can go to the Apple Vision OS tab and enter a usage description to get permission to use hand tracking. Most importantly, here we would like to select the app mode called Virtual Reality Dash Fully Immersive Space. Lastly, we are going to the Project Validation tab to fix some warnings and errors in our setup. Now, to prepare our scene, let's get rid of the canvas from before. Then we convert the main camera to an XR rig and add a simple cube so we can see something when we test. Very importantly, don't forget to add an AR session to your scene if the project validation hasn't done that for you already. Perfect. Let's build this again and test it in our simulator. And as you can see, we get this pop-up window telling us to be aware of the surroundings. And then when we jump into the experience, we are completely in the virtual world and can look around, which is not different from any other VR headset. Awesome. Let's finally look at Unity's Polyspatial and what we can build with it. Firstly, let's install all the necessary packages. We open up the package manager and install all the polyspatial packages by their name. You can find the necessary package name on the screen right now. After installation, we would like to also install two things. The first thing is the play to device input settings, which I will show you later how to use. Secondly, we would like to import the polyspatial samples, which we will look at and publish to our simulator later on. There are basically two additional types of applications you can create with Unity for Vision OS. The two types of 3D content in mixed reality or modes how they are also called in Unity are the so-called volumes, a new concept in XR developed by Apple. An app can create one or more volumes for displaying content in the mixed reality space. Each volume is a box that contains 3D content. In Unity, you can interact with volumes using a Unity component called Volume Camera, which we will look at in this tutorial. The Volume Camera lets us switch between two volumes, the bounded and the unbounded volume. There are some important differences between the two. Bounded volumes have a finite box-shaped extent. There can be multiple bounded volumes alongside each other, just like we did when we opened multiple windows at once in the simulator. Unity also calls this Mixed Reality Space Shared Mode. Let's look at the first sample, which is the manipulation scene. We can see that we have a volume camera here, and it is set to bounded, and has bounded volume settings attached to it. To build a Mixed Reality app, we need to go to the Apple Vision OS plugin and switch the app mode to Mixed Reality. 
we then also need to enable the polyspatial runtime. This runtime is also there to create a volume camera with default settings, if there isn't one already in the scene. If you want to include your own settings, make sure you are in a Resources folder. Right-click into it and go to Create, then Polyspatial, and then Volume Camera Configuration. We can then simply drag and drop it into our volume camera. Since we want to use the default settings, we revert that change again. Let's make sure we add our scene to the build settings and let's test the scene inside our simulator. As you can see, we can open up our app and play around with it. Additionally, we can add other volumes to the same space, such as the Safari browser or other windows. Now, an app using an unbounded volume owns the entire mixed reality view with no other applications visible. However, additional bounded volumes from the same application can coexist within this unbounded volume. Unity calls this space exclusive mode. Only within the unbounded volume, an application can request access to full hand tracking data through ARKit. However, these features cannot be tested within the simulator. With unbounded volumes, we can have all the features we are used to, such as, for example, plane detection, device tracking, image tracking, and hand tracking. There will also be a new feature called World Sensing that allows us to get plane detection, scene geometry, or in other words, scene mesh, and image tracking data. To enable this feature, as well as hand tracking, user permission will be required within the app. Also, very importantly, input is only captured on objects that have a collider. This is true for simple cubes as well as UI elements. To see this, let's look at a few samples. If we look at the UI sample, we can see that it has colliders on each component. Another component from Polyspatial that is notable is the Polyspatial Hover effect, which we can find on most objects. This effect is unfortunately not customizable at this point and entirely controlled by the operating system. Let's now open the manipulation sample from before and change the settings as well as the mode to unbounded. Make sure to add this scene to your build settings and let's see how it looks inside the simulator. Now, we first open the unbounded volume and when we then try to open the Safari window, you can see that our app completely closes instead of going to the background like before. Before we get to the end of this video, I wanted to show you an awesome tool that Unity is working on to directly test apps from the Unity editor either on the Vision OS simulator or the Apple Vision Pro device directly. Maybe you remember that we imported the play to device input settings from the polyspatial package. Once we have that, we can open the play to device window from the polyspatial menu on top. We then take a look at the documentation where we can find a Google Drive link to download the Xcode link app. At the time of recording, we require Unity version 2022.3.11 or later, Xcode version 15.1 beta 2 and the Vision OS simulator version 4 or higher. Definitely check the documentation exactly before proceeding. Once the app is downloaded, we can unzip it and simply drag and drop it into our simulator. This will now install the app. Let's open it up and we can see an IP address. Copy the address to your play to device window in Unity and then we can start the game. As you can see, we can see our volume being manipulated in real time by the Unity editor. The same will later also work on the actual Vision Pro device. Just make sure that you then download the test flight app from the documentation. Lastly, let me show you one last thing to get quickly started with Vision OS development. Unity provides us with sample projects that are already configured for us. We are going to download Vision OS template 0.6.2, save it in a desired location, and unzip it. We can then go ahead and add the project to our Unity Hub. Make sure you open it with a version that has the Vision OS module installed and selected. Let's select it and open up the template from Unity. As we quickly go through all the settings from before, we can see that everything is installed and set up already for us. Also, the target SDK is already set to Simulator SDK, 
so you really are able to just quickly test each sample for yourself. Let's see the bounded volume inside our simulator. We can also just test it directly inside the Unity editor. Now, if we look at the unbounded example, you remember that we unfortunately cannot test ARKit features inside our simulator. For this, Unity has already enabled the XR simulator inside the XR plugin management settings under Windows. Additionally, to be able to test this inside our editor, we need to go to the XR Interaction Toolkit tab and enable the XR Device Simulator settings. This will give us the XR Environment window, where we can download different simulation environments. Let's select the bedroom and see how it looks on play mode. As we can see, we can move around the space, and here you would be able to test your experience. Unfortunately, this is not working properly at the time of recording, but again, this will be very valuable to know once all the tools are out of beta. All right guys, and that's it for this video. This was a very long one, and I hope you could learn a lot. As you may have noticed, there are still some difficulties because everything is in beta. Just try it out yourself and let me know if it works for you. Get ready with Vision OS development right now for free, and I'm super excited to see what you can build with it. Again, if you'd like to support me, check out my Patreon, or simply join our Discord community and talk to other XR developers. See you in the next one.